bulk and cooler. So here we are at cattle yard and we are at. So here we can see a bulk and cooler which is installed here. So in this bulk and cooler, it is used to store raw milk collected after making of animals. So here we can see that a flexible pipeline coming from that window, it is going towards this BMG and it will be connected by using this nose to this particular point here. So we are having a union joint here. So when the milk will be collected, it will be connected via this union joint here. Now coming on to other design features. We can see that this BMC is having two lids. So one lid is on this side, another lid is on this side. So for these two lids, the basic purpose is to have a proper weight distribution so that a person has to lift less weight to open for inspection that what is there in the BMC and whether the things are working correctly or not. Here at the center we can see that there is a motor. So this motor is connected to an agitator shaft which is going inside the BMC for proper mixing as well as cooling of the contents. So we can see that at inside we are having that agitator blade. So that agitator blade is connected to that motor which we have shown at the outside. So this agitator blade is uh, doing the duty of proper mixing of milk so that no fat separation occurs as well as uniform heat distribution also occurs. So we can see that the surface of this BMC is hemi cylindrical. So it is just like a cylinder cut in half in the direction of its axis. So this particular shape will be having a smooth contour and have very less corners. So we can see that there are two ends at which the walls are at 90 degrees and in the other parts it is smooth contour without any corners. So for having a hygienic design this kind of design is generally used. So this is not the only design we can have several other designs as well. So this is one of the design. Now coming on to the refrigeration part of it. So we can see that at this side this is the refrigeration part of BMC and in this we are having this larger diameter pipeline which will be circulating chilled water. So it would be ice cold water which will be circulated onto the curved surface area via these pipelines. So here we can see that two pipelines are going from this side and two are going from this other side. So these pipelines are perforated towards the curved surface area of this inner tank so that the chilling or cooling effect can be transferred onto this metallic walls of the internal cylindrical part. Now regarding the cold water generation, this cold water will be generated by using this ice bank. So here at the bottom side we can see that there is some water stored inside this larger tank. So this water is cooled by using refrigeration system. So we can see there are two pair of evaporator coils. One pair of evaporator coil in this half of this BMC and another pair of evaporator coil is located at this another half of this BMC. So this is known as IBT type of bulk milk cooler design. IBT means ice bank tank. So at the bottom side we are having a bank of ice and that bank of ice will be cooling the water which is inside this larger tank. So this ice cold water will be circulated by using this circulation pump here. So at the outside we can see that we are having a pipeline coming from the bottom of this larger tank going at the suction of this pump. So this is the circulation pump. It will be sucking the cold water and it will be discharging this cold water via this pipeline which is at the discharge end and it will go via discharge.
डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पाइपलाइन टू दो पेरिफेरल स्मॉलर डायमीटर परफोरेटेड पाइपलाइन तो दिस चिल्ड वाटर विल बी ड्रिपिंग डाउन दि सर्व सर्फेस एरिया एंड ट्रांसफरिंग दीट फ्रॉम मिल्क वाया दिस मेटेलिक वॉल एंड फॉल डाउन एंड गेट रिसर्कुलेटेड सो दिस वाटर इज इन रिसर्कुलेशन नाउ टू प्रोड्यूस दिस रेफ्रिजरेशन इफेक्ट और कूलिंग इफेक्ट फॉर दिस वाटर वी आर यूजिंग टू सेपरेट इवेपोरेटर सिस्टम और रेफ्रिजरेशन सिस्टम इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्लांट एंड हेयर वी कैन सी द पार्ट ऑफ दिस रेफ्रिजरेशन प्लांट एट दिस साइड सो At this particular end, we can see that there are two separate, two different pipes. So one pipe, this copper pipe of lesser diameter, another copper pipe. We can see this is covered with hot frost of larger diameter. This pipe of larger diameter, we can see some insulation has been provided, and this smaller diameter pipe, we are not having insulation. So what are these pipelines meant for, and what do they carry? Is that a smaller diameter pipeline is carrying the liquid near to ambient temperature refrigerant so refrigerant is there in the liquid form near to ambient temperature at higher pressure so it will be going towards the expansion valve of refrigeration system and after expansion valve it will be going to the evaporator coils which are located at the bottom of this bmc then after evaporator coils the refrigerant will evaporate taking up latent heat of evaporation from From the water present inside this larger tank, and then become in vapor form. So lower temperature, lower pressure, vapor refrigerant will be coming via this larger diameter pipeline and going back to the compressor system of this refrigeration system. So here at the inside, inside we can see that these two pipelines, one is smaller diameter pipeline, this one which is going directly to the inside. So we can see that this smaller pipeline. which is going directly to the inside and this larger diameter pipeline which is exiting at this end so this is smaller diameter pipeline we can see that it is having a expansion system attached to it so we we can see that at this smaller pipeline this this is the expansion valve so we are having two separate evaporators so two separate expansion valves will be there one is this side another one is this side so these two are expansion valves so these two expansion valves what they will do is they will throttle this liquid near to ambient temperature liquid refrigerant at higher pressure to a lower pressure so they are just like having a valve which is not fully opened so it will have a throttling effect and this is smaller diameter capillary tube here we can see at both these expansion valve this spring kind of mechanism this is a capillary tube so this capillary tube is having a sensor attached to it so here we can see that one of the sensor is at this side here another sensor for second evaporator coil is at this side here so these sensors what they will do is they are attached to the outgoing refrigerant line so they will be sensing the temperature of outgoing refrigerant and based on that temperature they will be sensing and taking action that if the temperature of outgoing refrigerant is more that means there is more heat load inside so they will allow more amount of refrigerant so mass flow of refrigerant will increase through the expansion valve if the temperature of outgoing refrigerant is less then these sensors will be partially shutting down or closing down that expansion valve and hence reducing the mass flow of refrigerant and hence maintaining or producing a constant set temperature of the refrigerant coils that means evaporator coil so this kind of expansion valve is known as thermostatic expansion valve so in short form it is called as tev thermostatic for tev for expansion valve so these are tev so thermostatic expansion valve for one evaporator thermostatic expansion valve for another evaporator then we can see that both these evaporator coils are joining together in this larger diameter pipeline here so both this outlet of these two coils will be joining similarly at the starting at that side at the downward end we can see that these two evaporator coils are splitting from the same pipeline which went into the system now coming on to the temperature control of overall bmc so this is the temperature sensor which is attached to this wall of bmc here so this sensor what it will do is it will sense the temperature of this wall 
which is of the inner cylindrical or hemi cylindrical side so this will sense what is the temperature of inside container or inside tank so if the temperature is less than set temperature then this cooling water pump will switch on if the temperature is not less than if it is more than then the cooling water pump will switch on if it is less than or equal to that temperature which is set then that this circulation cold water pump will switch off so like this we can see that we are using secondary refrigerant as water in this case because we cannot directly use the refrigerant as such to cool the milk that will have several problems some of them can be that if the refrigerant leaks then it can be toxic to the food systems if the refrigerant is used directly then it will be producing very large amount of heat transfer rates and hence can form a frost film inside which will be then having some cold shocks or cold damages to the milk component as well as impede the rate of heat transfer inside the bmc now here we can see at the control panel so this is the control panel of bmc so here we are seeing that currently this is at 7 degree celsius temperature so when this temperature rises a bit so depending on what is the temperature set currently this temperature is set at around 8 degree celsius or so so when the temperature will reach 8 degree celsius that circulation pump will automatically switch on and when this temperature reaches below 5 degree celsius then that circulation pump will automatically get switched off so here at this end we can see the discharge outlet of this bmc so milk will be discharged from this end so here we are seeing certain sensors so this is the flow sensor as well as this will be also getting the level means if the level of milk is below or not proper in this pipeline then it will sense that the milk is no more coming out of the system it will switch off this discharge pump if the milk is coming there to this pump then it will be measuring the amount of flow rate so this sensor is for safety of this pump so that it should not run dry so there we are having a valve so this valve will be used to control whether we want to let milk go into this pump or not so currently this milk pump this valve we can see that this is in closed direction so while it is in closed direction no content of the tank can go into this pump because this is a centrifugal pump if we open this valve with when the milk is in the tank then due to its hydrostatic head milk will automatically come into the pump in this discharge pipe as well so this discharge pipeline is then connected via this flexible hose and going outside the building where there will be tanker to which this milk will be discharged so here we can see that this smaller diameter pipeline which is going into the building via this wall as well as this larger diameter pipeline which is insulated and also passing through this wall so these two pipelines are used to carry refrigerant the smaller diameter pipeline is used to carry liquid refrigerant at high pressure near to ambient temperature or atmospheric temperature and in this larger diameter pipeline we are having vapor refrigerant at very low temperatures and it would be at a lower pressure as well so we can see that these two pipelines are passing and going into this unit here so this particular unit here this is housing of the compressor as well as condenser with its associated accessories so here we are seeing that these two refrigerant lines are entering this cabinet from this side so following these lines from one end to another end will be helping us to identify what is happening in this process so starting with this larger diameter pipeline which is coming from the evaporator to the compressor system so here we can see that it is coming via this larger diameter pipeline and entering into this compressor here so here at the compressor we can see that there is a insulated line this side which is entering into the compressor and then this uninsulated smaller diameter pipeline which is coming out of the compressor 
so this black piece of machine is compressor in this cabinet we are having one more cylindrical component there we can see that is not the compressor it is the receiver now how to identify which of these two parts is compressor and which is the receiver is that in the refrigeration system the main power or motive power is required to be given to the compressor so here we can see there is an electrical junction box situated at this part and no electricity connection is there at that particular part so that also leads us to conclusion that this must be the compressor another way can be that in the compressor one of the line will be insulated another will be uninsulated so which is not the case with the receiver there so at the receiver none of the line is insulated and both of the lines are having similar diameter no difference in diameter is there in the receiver case so at this compressor we are having difference in diameter as well as insulation one line is insulated another line is uninsulated now we can also see that from these pipelines we are having certain t junction so here we can see that one of the pipeline is getting out of this insulated line here and one of the line is getting out from uninsulated line also at this end and also we are having one extra line at this side from the insulated part at this particular part so basically this pipeline which is additional provided at this insulated end or larger diameter end here is the suction core to the compressor and this pipeline is is used to fill the refrigerant into the system as and when required so it would be required at the time of installation of the system when there is no refrigerant in the system and the system has been just installed and joined together and is required to be filled with the refrigerant gas so it would be filled from this particular end no such pipeline will be existing at any other point in this whole refrigerant circuit now coming on to these t junctions one at this suction line another at this discharge line so these two pipelines here we can see that they are going into this component here so one of the line is going at this side another line is going at this side so this particular piece is called as lp hp cutout so this is a safety feature of refrigeration system and it is required to have safe working conditions ensured for the complete refrigeration system now how safety is ensured in this lp hp cutout system is that it is carrying this electrical wire here so this is connected to a electrical relay inside in between these two windows inside here and that relay will be operating on the basis of pressures of both suction as well as discharge of this compressor so at one side so here we can see that this side this cut out it is having this reading in the ranges 465 psig from 100 psig so this is the hp cut out and this side we are having lp cut out so lp cut out means low pressure cut out hp cut out means high pressure cut out the function of this is that when there is lower pressure than the safe working pressure to the suction line of compressor the power going to the compressor will be cut off so that there is prevention of any physical damage to the pipelines connecting to the compressor otherwise what will happen compressor will continue suction and if there is no refrigerant coming into the system the pipes may implode into itself and they will get squeezed into in itself and permanently physically damaging the refrigerant pipeline similarly will be the case with the hp that in the case of hp if there is extra high pressure at the discharge end of the compressor then in that condition the uh, discharge line may burst due to heavy or higher pressure so to prevent that bursting of pipelines and damage of property this hp cut out will be switching off this relay which is supplying power to the compressor so this lp hp cut out function is to operate the compressor within safe working limits of pressure whether it is low pressure or high pressure now in both these cases whether low pressure or high pressure how these conditions can be reached is that if there is some blockage in the evaporator line and refrigerant is unable to come out of the system to the compressor then there will be very low pressure in the suction line and that is how low pressure conditions can be created in the system and that 
कैन डैमेज द सिस्टम इन केस ऑफ हाई प्रेशर देर कैन बी ब्लॉकेज एट द एग्जिट पॉइंट ऑफ द कम्प्रेसर मे बी एट द रिसीवर और द कंडेंसर तो द रेफ्रिजरेंट इज अनेबल टू गो टू द नेक्स्ट कम्पोनेंट एंड हैंड्स मे लीड टू हाई प्रेशर बिल्डअप एंड फाइनली एक्सप्लोजन ऑफ द डिस्चार्ज लाइन नाउ आफ्टर कम्प्रेसर हेयर वी कैन सी दैट दिस पाइप लाइन विच इज द डिस्चार्ज पाइप लाइन इट विल बी गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट कम्पोनेंट एट दैट बैक एंड सो हेयर वी कैन सी दैट देर इज अ फैन विच इज कवर्ड विद अ कवर एंड दैट फैन इज ऑल्सो हैविंग सम फिन प्लेट टाइप ऑफ अरेन्जमेंट बिहाइंड इट सो एट दैट फिन प्लेट अरेन्जमेंट वी आर हैविंग अ अरे ऑफ ट्यूब्स और पाइप लाइन सो दिस पाइप लाइन और ट्यूब इज गोइंग इन दैट एरे एंड दैट एरे इज गोइंग थ्रू अ टैक ऑफ प्लेट विच इज फिन विच इज एक्सटेंडेड सर्फेस एरिया सो दैट द एयर फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फेयर विच इज सर्कुलेटेड बाई यूजिंग दैट फैन कैन टेक अवे द हीट फ्रॉम दैट रेफ्रिजरेंट पेपर एंड कैन कंडेंस द रेफ्रिजरेंट सो रेफ्रिजरेंट फ्रॉम द कंप्रेसर विल बी इन हाई टेम्परेचर हाई प्रेशर वेपर स्टेट सो दैट विल बी सेंड टू द कंडेंसर एंड कंडेंसर इज रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूज द टेम्परेचर एंड लिक्विफाई इट सो इट हैज टू रिड्यूज द टेम्परेचर टू सच अ पॉइंट दैट इट कैन बी लिक्विफाइड एंड ऑल्सो ट्रांसफर द फेज फ्रॉम पेपर फेज टू लिक्विड फेज सो आफ्टर कंडेंसर वेन द रेफ्रिजरेंट गेट्स लिक्विफाइड देन इट विल बी गोइंग टू दैट रिसीवर सो एट द रिसीवर वी कैन सी दैट दिस पाइप लाइन इमर्जिंग फ्रॉम द बॉटम एंड इट इज गोइंग इन टू द रिसीवर एंड एट द टॉप एंड इट इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द रिसीवर द फंक्शन ऑफ रिसीवर इज टू स्टोर द लिक्विड रेफ्रिजरेंट सो दैट इट कैन बी यूज एज एन वेन रिक्वायर्ड सो इन केस हाई रेफ्रिजरेंट फ्लोर इट इज रिक्वायर्ड देन दैट रेफ्रिजरेंट कैन बी ड्रॉन आउट ऑफ दिस रिसीवर इफ लो फ्लोर इट इज रिक्वायर्ड देन एडिशनल रेफ्रिजरेंट कैन गेट स्टोर्ड इन टू द रिसीवर सो द फंक्शन ऑफ रिसीवर इज टू सप्लाई द रिक्वायर्ड अमाउंट ऑफ रेफ्रिजरेंट टू द इवेपोरेटर वाया एक्सपेंशन वाल आफ्टर दैट रिसीवर वी कैन सी दिस ब्लैक कंपोनेंट हियर सो दिस ब्लैक कंपोनेंट दिस इज फिल्टर ड्रायर यूनिट सो एज द नेम सजेस्ट इट हैज टू फंक्शन टू परफॉर्म वन इज द फिल्ट्रेशन अनादर वन इज द ड्राइंग सो फिल्ट्रेशन मीन्स इफ देर इज एनी एक्सपीरियंस मैटर इट मे बी डस्ट डर्ट पीसीज फ्रॉम वेल्डिंग ऑफ पाइप लाइन ड्यूरिंग इंस्टॉलेशन एंड एनी अदर थिंग विच इज नॉट रेफ्रिजरेंट कैन बी स्टॉप्ड हियर सो दैट इट शुड नॉट गो टू द एक्सपेंशन वॉल इफ इट गोज टू द एक्सपेंशन वॉल बिकॉज ऑफ वेरी लो डायमीटर वेरी लेस साइज ऑफ ओरिफिस इट विल ब्लॉक द सिस्टम एंड द ड्राइंग पार्ट ऑफ इट इट कंटेन्स अ डेसिकेंट जनरली सिलिका जेल और सिमिलर सिस्टम सो विच विल बी रिमूविंग मॉइस्चर फ्रॉम द रेफ्रिजरेंट इज एनी सो द मॉइस्चर फ्रॉम द रेफ्रिजरेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी रिमूव बिकॉज इफ इट इज नॉट रिमूव देन वेन द रेफ्रिजरेंट विल गो द इवेपोरेटर दैट मॉइस्चर विल कन्वर्ट इन टू आइस एंड चोक द कॉइल्स एज वेल एज द एक्सपेंशन वॉल एंड हैंड्स कैन डैमेज द सिस्टम सो द फंक्शन ऑफ ड्रायर इज टू रिमूव मॉइस्चर फिल्टर इज टू रिमूव एनी एक्सपीरियंस मैटर एंड स्टॉप इट हियर नाउ फ्रॉम वेयर दीज टू थिंग्स कैन एंटर द रेफ्रिजरेंट इज दैट द एक्सपीरियंस मैटर डस्ट डर्ट वेल्डिंग कंपोनेंट एक्सेट्रा कैन एंटर द सिस्टम वेन ड्यूरिंग इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ द सिस्टम वेयर इज एनी डेब्रिज कलेक्टेड इन टू द इन साइड ऑफ द पाइप लाइन दैट विल बी फ्लोइंग अलॉन्ग विद द रेफ्रिजरेंट सो दैट कैन कम इन द केस ऑफ मॉइस्चर द मॉइस्चर कैन एंटर इन टू द रेफ्रिजरेंट सिस्टम वाया इवेपोरेटर क्वाइल्स सो बिकॉज एट द इवेपोरेटर साइड वी हैव लोअर प्रेशर सो द प्रेशर आर इवन लोअर देन एटमोस्फेयर सो इफ देर इज एनी लीकेज इन द इवेपोरेटर क्वाइल रेफ्रिजरेंट विल नॉट कम आउट ऑफ द सिस्टम बट मॉइस्चर विल इंग्रेस इन टू द सिस्टम एंड दैट कैन लीड टू एटिंग ऑफ द रेफ्रिजरेंट और मॉइस्चर एडिशन टू द सिस्टम नाउ हेयर दिस कंपोनेंट वी कैन सी हेयर सो दिस इज अ साइट ग्लास वेयर इन वी कैन सी दैट वेदर द रेफ्रिजरेंट इज क्लीन और इट कंटेन सम पार्टिकल्स और नॉट सो इट विल गिव अस अ फिजिकल इंडिकेशन ऑफ द हेल्थ ऑफ द सिस्टम सो वेदर इज देर एनी कलर चेंज सो इट मे बी ड्यू टू सम लुब्रिकेटिंग ऑयल बींग बर्निंग समवेयर इन द सिस्टम सम एक्सट्रीमियस मैटर कमिंग इन टू द सिस्टम और सो आफ्टर दिस द रेफ्रिजरेंट विल बी सप्लाइड वाय दिस पाइप लाइन टू दिस यूनिट सो हेयर दिस ब्लू कलर यूनिट वी कैन सी दिस इज अ सॉलिनाइड वॉल सो दिस इज ऑल्सो अ सेफ्टी फीचर बेसिकली द फंक्शन ऑफ दिस सॉलिनाइड वॉल इज टू 
allow or stop the flow of refrigerant. So this solenoid valve is a NC valve means normally closed valve. So generally when there is no signal to the system, this solenoid valve will remain closed. That means no refrigerant will be allowed to pass through the system. As when we switch on the system, there will be signal coming to this solenoid valve and it will open itself. So it will allow refrigerant to pass. So the function of solenoid valve will be to get liquid refrigerant poured in the receiver only and not let it go forward when the system is turned off. Otherwise what will happen as the liquid refrigerant is at high pressure and if there is no blockage in valves in line, the refrigerant without any pumping force will go to the evaporator itself and will produce a refrigerant effect until and unless whole refrigerant effect is utilized. So that will lead to loss of power or energy which was expended in production of liquid refrigerant. So this is the function of solenoid valve.